Um, so how about talking, uh, starting with you, if you, th this question on how you would rate the business climate in Manchester today, what, what would be a fair answer? Uh, reasonably positive, wh whether you put it six, seven or eight, I, I wouldn't hazard a guess. Is, is that the bandwidth you use um, between I, six, seven and eight? That's, I, that was not but the intention of my question. No. The intention was that you say, this is it. It, it is reasonably positive, depending on which sectors of the economy you're talking about. Um, culture, media, commercial services, still very strong. Residential, uh, like elsewhere, uh, struggling. Uh, certainly the high density apartments. Um, other aspects of development, quite strong. Over the years, Manchester has, to, has become a kind of second financial centre in the UK. Uh, um, I know that, that a lot of companies, financial services companies, uh, shared service centres, etc., have uh, set up shop in, in Manchester. What, what are the main reasons for that? What can you offer to companies who would have a first logical look at London and, and then you look next? What has Manchester to offer? Uh, a more efficient uh, product, um, a lower cost product, access to skills, uh, much more favourable retention of, of employment. Um, access to amenities um, and also being part of a, a strong, vibrant and diversified economic base. You, you mentioned already it's not only the financial services sector, it's more the, uh, the diversified economy. What would you mention as the three main strengths of Manchester as an as a economic pole, as an economic engine, certainly for the north of England? Skills, um, research, the institutions of, of Manchester are, are world class. Uh, so that's been able to support a growing and, and, and strength and uh, scientific and research base. Uh, and also transport, uh, how we connect ourselves to labour markets, I believe, uh, is going to become increasingly important over the next 10 years. That's an issue, a challenge, I think, for all cities, uh, not just Manchester. And the, the progress we've been able to make during, that, during the last few years has, has kept us in good stead. So our approach to regeneration is about how we shape places, how we actually make uh, places attractive for people to live and work and to visit. That's a very, very important part of what I do and what my colleagues do at the City Council. But equally, how we actually equip people with the skills and the life chances they need in order to uh, access the benefits uh, which I think uh, success brings. And uh, that's an area where uh, in many big, big cities, we, we see problems which still have to be tackled, uh, and that's a challenge which we face uh, with great confidence, and it's one which I'm sure others in similar positions also need to face up to as well. There is a, a complete interdependency between, on the one hand, uh, demonstrating to business that you have an efficient and productive labour force, uh, because that's about uh, how you support uh, decisions about to, lo to locate in places like Manchester or expand, and at the same time, uh, how we actually reduce dependency spending, uh, how we actually support growth, which at a time of fiscal restraint, not just in the UK, but I suggest in many parts of the Western world, is going to be a challenge which all of us are going to have to face uh, increasingly over the next few years. There are 10 local authorities which make up Greater Manchester, uh, we're very clear about what our priorities are, very clear about our shared ambitions and very clear about our programmes. And interestingly, over the past 12 months, it might have something to do with the general election looming in the UK uh, in the next couple of months. We've also made remarkable progress with government, not only in terms of sharing our ambitions, but also developing a programme of genuine devolution, which will give us much more uh, capacity to influence our own destiny and deliver our own priorities. Manchester also believes in having major events in the city and take benefit of the social and economic spin-off of that. I think Manchester has got a very sp strong sporting pedigree. Uh, uh, two uh, major football teams, one world-class, the other one certainly the richest and wants to be world-class very soon, <laughs> uh, which we all uh, support massively. Um, uh, very strong investment in cultural and sporting facilities in Manchester, the Commonwealth Games, World Championships. Turning my questions to Chris Oglesby, your CEO of Brentwood, a property management uh, company with a portfolio of about uh, more than 900 million 
pounds, um, mainly focusing on, on Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, and Birmingham. I think there are not that many property management companies um, in the UK who made, who increased their profits last year. So uh, tell us a little bit about that success which you had with your company. Um, we're, we're actually a, a property investment and development company that also manages our own buildings. Um, and uh, we, we've been particularly successful because our business is absolutely focused on the customer, on the occupier. And, uh, but everybody says that, isn't it? No, they don't. No, I mean, if, and if they do, then it, it, it really isn't true. The majority of the property industry focuses on the financer, the financier. And uh, from our point of view, we focus on the customer. And if we keep the customer happy, the customer will continue to pay the rent, and that will keep the financier happy. But how would you assess? Uh, how would you assess the, the the real estate investment climate now today in, uh, let's say, the north of England? Yeah. We, I mean, like in a lot of places, uh, there was no investment activity in 2009, um, but uh, we're starting to see the key elements start uh, come, come back together. There is exceptionally strong um, investor demand at the moment, but that investor demand is for secure uh, income streams. On the other hand, we have very strong customer demand, occupier demand now as well. Um, and so we've got the occupier demand, we've got the investor demand for those income streams. What we've got to do now is, uh, as the property industry in the middle is put, is put the two together. Um, and uh, we had a weakening occupational market last year. That is now starting to, uh, starting to firm up as, uh, as, as demand is using up the, uh, the, excess, uh, the excess supply in the market. And uh, we need to be creative. In the UK, it's no secret that, uh, that our government has, uh, has overspent in recent years. So there isn't, significant, there isn't going to be significant public sector money. Um, but I believe we have probably one, you know, one of the most enterprising private sectors in the, in the UK, and um, in, the, uh, in, in Europe, in the UK, and particularly uh, in the north of England as well. So. Where is the, uh, the growing occupier demand coming from? It's, it's, it's a complete mixture. Um, we have over a thousand customers in our property in, uh, in Manchester, so a thousand different businesses. And uh, as uh, the world isn't flat, as you say, we've got winners and losers. And uh, um, the winners, um, those, those stronger customer, customers, those stronger occupiers are growing. Um, we're, uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, our customers exporting their services now. As Howard said, we've, uh, we've got a very strong financial professional services community in the, uh, in the UK and we're seeing now UK service providers now um, uh, exporting services. We're also um, winning significant inward investment into, uh, into the North West, both uh, for internationally and also, uh, also nationally, um, um, taking, uh, offering a, 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 good, a good alternative to, uh, to, 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 to London. We've got a very strong growing knowledge economy. I mean, everybody has said that that's been up here. And it is the future in the developed world. If you do not have a strong knowledge economy, then I think you might as well pack up, pack up now. How how could the airport play a, an important role in the future growth of the city as well? Because a number of cities, if we talk about Barcelona, but certainly also about Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, you see around the airport a lot of office activities, industrial activities, so where the airport is also a real hub. Um, uh, we don't see that too much yet in Manchester. Um, I think that's just a case of branding. Uh, Manchester Airport sits in, uh, in the South Manchester office market. South Manchester office market is the largest out-of-town office market in the re in regional UK. Um, it uh, comprises over a million square metres. And, uh, so, and that has been a very, very strong office market. Um, and so whilst the airport, which is publicly owned, has been focused on growing passenger numbers, opening new routes, which has been very important to bringing new business and inward investment into uh, into into Greater Manchester, um, the uh, the South Manchester office market, which effectively is Airport City, um, it straddles four different local authority boroughs. Mm -hmm. There is a now a plan. The airport has a plan to develop on more on campus uh, and to develop an on-campus Airport City, but off campus, um, directly around the airport. As I say, it is the most uh, the, the 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 largest um, out of town. or sorry, the largest um, yeah, non non city centre office market in mm -hmm. uh, in the UK outside of London. And uh, that has grown because of the strength of Manchester Airport and the growth of Manchester Airport over the last 10 or 15 years.